Hey superstars, we're excited to present you with an amazing project in today's video. We will explore the creative process of using direct-to-film transfers to take a gorgeous image produced by Midjourney AI and turn it into a wearable masterpiece. Although this artwork is amazing on its own and is printable as is, when it is placed onto a garment, it feels heavy and less breathable. In this video, we'll push the boundaries of DTF printing by preparing the artwork to be more comfortable and wearable. We'll be using advanced techniques like half tones and a black knockout effect to ensure the print is light and breathable as possible. And the result is gonna be phenomenal, especially with this print. You won't believe how the transfer will turn out after we proceed with the artwork. But knocking out significant portions of the black from this design specifically, we anticipated creating the most breathable print we have ever done. This technique will make a design look incredible on a black shirt, enhancing comfort without compromising any visual impact. I'm generally excited to see the final results and I'm sure you guys are too. So let's jump right into it and start with the artwork process. Stick around and see how we bring this AI generated image to life with DTF transfers. Today, our tutorial will focus on applying a halftone effect to our ninja image. Before we apply the halftone effect, we need to fix our image. As you can see, the image is incomplete and has fragmented parts, especially in the water splatter areas, and it looks like it is inside a box. What we need to do is make the image appear whole and seamless, without any fragmented parts. First, we need to extend the canvas size of our image to create some space. Press C to activate the crop tool and a transform box will appear. Then, extend the canvas. The purpose of the space we left on the canvas is for utilizing the clone stamp tool. We'll use it to fix the edges of our image, making it appear seamless and ensuring there are no jagged edges. Select the clone stamp tool from the toolbar on the left or press S on your keyboard. Before you start cloning, you need to choose a sample source. Hold down the Alt key, Option key on Mac, and click on an area of the image that you want to use as a reference or sample point. This will determine the source from which the clone stamp tool will copy pixels. We'll apply this to both sides and the bottom of our image, because these are the areas where our image is cut off. To address other areas of the image, we can utilize the eraser tool. Shortcut, press the letter E to eliminate small details such as tiny droplets in the surrounding area. This action will notably enhance our image, rendering it more cohesive and seamless in appearance. After completing this process, our final result image looks like this. It has improved significantly with its edges fixed, and it now looks seamless. Now, on to the next step, the halftone effect. Okay, let's begin our tutorial on creating a halftone effect in our image. Remember, this is just one of the many ways to create a halftone effect in Photoshop, and there are plenty of other methods. But for now, let me guide you through my own method. So, let's get started. First, open our Ninja image in Photoshop. It's preferable to check the image size first. You can do this by going to Image, then Image Size. Make sure the resolution is set to 300 for the best outcome of our halftone effect. Once the image resolution is OK, we can proceed to the layer panel and make a copy of our image. To copy, simply press Ctrl A to select the entire image, then press Ctrl C to copy it. After that, press Ctrl V to paste the copied image creating new layer in our layer panel. You can rename this copied image layer to avoid confusion and keep track of our layers. After renaming the layer, we need to convert our image to a smart object. To do this, right-click on the layer and you'll see Convert to Smart Object. Once converted, you'll see a small icon on the layer indicating it has been converted. 
Now we can start with our halftone effect. Double-click the small icon of the converted smart object and it will take us to a new tab where we will do the editing for our halftone effect. To start the process, go to the left part of our screen and select Image, then go to Mode and choose Grayscale. You'll notice the image is now in black and white. It's up to you if you want to improve the shadows and highlights of our image. To do this, you can go to Image again, then Adjustments, and select Levels. A box will appear where you can adjust the appearance of your image. Once you're satisfied, just press OK. In our next step, go to Image, then Mode, and select Bitmap. A small box will appear asking you to flatten layers. Just press OK. Then, another box will appear for the output resolution. Make sure it's set to 300, similar to what we did earlier. After pressing OK, another box will appear for the settings on how our halftone effect will appear. For the frequency, the standard is 40, but feel free to experiment with it. Keep the angle as it is, 22, and for the shape, select Round, then press OK. If you notice at this zoom level, the result may not be very obvious, but if we zoom in, we'll see that it has indeed been converted to halftone. What happened here is that all the highlighted parts of our original image have been converted to halftone. Also, notice that our image is now black and white, but we're not done yet. The next thing we'll do is to save our result by pressing Ctrl plus S and close it by pressing the X icon on the tab or simply press Ctrl plus W to go back to our previous project tab. For the next step, let's go to the layer panel and at the bottom you'll see a round icon. Click on that and look for solid color, then select it. A color picker box will appear. Just choose any dark color because this will serve as our background. Rename this layer to avoid confusion and place it below our halftone layer. Next, let's make another copy of our original image and place it above our solid color layer. For the final process, make sure the halftone layer is selected, then go to the tools and select the magic wand tool or simply press W. Then, go to the image and select any white colored halftone. Once you've made your selection, go back to the upper left of the screen, go to Select, and find Similar, then click. This will select all the similar colors in our image layer, which are the white colored halftones we selected earlier. The next step is to go to our layer panel and select the original image layer. After that, go to the bottom of the layer panel and you'll see a small rectangle icon with a circle inside, which is the Add Layer Mask icon. Just click on it. Finally, click the eye icon next to the halftone layer to hide it and zoom in on the image. Voila! Our halftone effect ninja is done. The beauty of this is that any dark colored background will be applicable to our halftone image. You can try changing the color in the solid color layer to see different effects. We finished printing this artwork, but before we get started, please check us out using the link in the description. If you're looking for a trustworthy DTF supplier, or if you're not happy with your existing one, our expertise lies in producing personalized DTF transfers for apparel and UV stickers for solid surfaces. Our objective is to offer a large selection of vivid colors, excellent quality, and prompt delivery, as well as a trusted service. All right, let's check out these graphics. So for the first one, you can already tell how solid of a color that black is. So I was excited of this one because if that's just one solid color, we could just completely take it out and that's what we did guys. And I can't really wait to see it on a shirt. So let's get it started. 
to any newcomers, this is the Heatmaster Prisma. We are using a fan favorite from all our videos. It is a 16 by 20 layout. It also makes it very easy to put shirts in by threading, as well as also it has a 10 inch pullout. So makes it a no brainer for any type of graphic or any type of transfer, just very easy to use. Plus it's very heavy to take off of this. So you're probably not gonna see a change until we have to. <laughs> If you're interested in buying the Heatmaster Prisma, we'll put a link down in the description below. For our blank tees, we are using a US blank side seam medium, 100% combed and ring spun cotton jersey. The model number we'll be using is a US 2000. The shirt comes in a small all the way to a 3XL. If you're considering buying blanks made by US blanks, then I would drop a link down below it for you guys. So let's get it started, guys. We're gonna first press this one time just so we can get the wrinkles out. There we go. And since it has a lot of small fine details, we are gonna use just a microfiber cloth, just so we can make sure everything is on there. And we're gonna press it one more time. Take a look. I think it came out fantastic. It has so much taken out on it too as well. It is, I could feel how breathable it is. It feels like it's not even there. As well as it, it captured so much of the image too as well. It did so good. And I, I don't know if you could tell, even like when taking it apart too, this fine little details didn't really attach on there. But that's fine. It, it still made it very unique and it made it really good. <laughs> yeah, this came out great. All right, it looks great. Thanks for tuning in. That's how you correctly use halftones to achieve a black knockout effect. I hope this tutorial was useful for you guys. We want you to become a better DTF user, so be sure to bookmark it for quick access in the future. It's not a time for me to end this, so we sincerely appreciate your support. We thank you for everyone for watching. For additional tutorials, please like and subscribe to this video if you haven't already.